our next application of deliberate circu uh, circular references um, is to use circular references in calculating uh, a group of random numbers such that there's no duplication within those random numbers. Uh, just to give an example, the following are not random numbers, but I'm going to type them in randomly. Um, here we have um, a bunch of random numbers that I just happened to type. And if we look, there are, um, assuming that I came up with uh, these at random, there are actually two instances of this number 54 and two instances of this number 45. What I would like to do is generate random numbers in some way such that uh, there would not be a duplicate. So if I have a 54 here, this would not be a 54 here, but it would be some other random number. And if this is a 45 here, I would not have a 45 here, I'd have some other random number. Um, okay, so um, in order to do this, we're going to need a group of different functions, which I'm going to just uh, introduce carefully. Um, the first one that we're going to be using is the int function. What int does is it takes some number with uh, some decimal component afterwards, possibly, and truncates that decimal component. So, for example, if I say equals int of 3, I'm going to just get a 3. If I say equals int of 3.14, well, that's going to chop off this 0.14, and I'm just going to get 3. Similarly, if I have equals int of uh, 3.9, it's also going to give me 3, because it just laps off the 0.9. So it just truncates the number. It's kind of like rounding, except it does a truncation. Um, okay, so uh, that's the first of the functions we're going to be using, is int. Uh, the next function that we're going to be using is rand. What rand does is it generates um, a random number. In fact, let's click here on fx. Um, we're going to look for all functions, and we'll look for rand. And it says it returns a random number greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. So no matter what, it could be 0, it could be 0.1, it could be 0.2, it could be 0.3, it could be 0.1. 1, 1, 3, uh, but it's gonna, whatever that number is, is going to be less than 1, and it's going to be evenly distributed. And every single time we recalculate, that number is going to change. So it's a volatile function. Uh, I'll show you what that means in a minute. So, um, for example, I could type in, let's just retype this, I could say equals rand, and it takes no arguments, but it requires that open and close parentheses. It's going to give me 0.35, uh, oops, in this case it gave me 0 0.07899, which is between 0 and 1. If I press F9 to explicitly recalculate the worksheet, it gives me 0 0.00765. If I press F9 again to recalculate, it gives me 0.62695. As long as I keep on recalculating, it's going to give me a new number uh, between 0 and 1. Now, I actually want whole numbers that are random, instead of these fractional numbers between 0 and 1. So in order to accomplish that, uh, what we can do is multiply the result of rand by uh, the number that we want to have as the maximum. So for example, let's say I want numbers between 1 and 100. Um, okay, so I'm going to actually approximate it, and then I'm going to get closer and closer to the result of this. I could say equals rand, open close parentheses, times 100. And here I get 86.9753, because really what it, calc what it calculated was 0 0.869. We multiplied that by 100, and so it shifted it over a little bit, and it gave me 86.9, uh, because uh, we just multiplied by 100. Now this is actually going to give me random numbers between 0 and um, less than 100, because if you calculate it, so let's say the num we, we said that the random number could be 0, so 0 times any number um, is going to be 0. So, um, and furthermore, uh, let's say uh, I calculated, so, so 0 is going to be on the very end of this uh, spectrum, I could get a 0, and uh, 
it also the I, it cannot possibly generate a one. It said that it goes from zero to some number less than one. So I could theoretically get zero point nine 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 nine. If I multiply that by a hundred, I'll end up with ninety nine point nine, but I will not actually get a hundred. Uh, so I could fix that. Instead of calculating it like this as equals rand times a hundred, I could say equals rand times a hundred plus one. It's going to do this plus one after it does a multiplication by 100, first of all, because that's the way that we're reading it from uh, left to right. And secondly, uh, just order of operation multiplication takes place before addition. And so, this is now going to give us uh, 18.7 over here, um, 28.9, I'll recalculate F9 again, 60.7, and so I could just keep on the 96.0, 32. Each of these are, uh, are good numbers there. Um, so now, uh, let's say I had a zero, rand returned a zero, so zero times whatever random, uh, uh, times 100 is going to give us a zero, plus one is going to give me a, a one, which is at the very end of this spectrum, and um, let's say it happens to calculate 99, uh, 0.99, so uh, point, 0 0.99 times 100 will be um, 99, plus one is going to give me... Um, 100. On the other hand, I might have 0 0.999, right? 0 0.999. If I took 0 0.999 times 100, and then I added 1 to it, um, oops, let's calculate that. Um, so I would get something like 100.9, um, which is higher than that maximum amount. So, what? Because uh, I want it to be between 1 and 100. So that's where this int function that I spoke about earlier will come into play. No matter what, I want to have a whole number. I'll just trim off uh, the stuff after the decimal point. So the formula that we're going to be using is going to be equals rand times 100 plus 1. We'll take all of that and we're going to use the int function on it to trim off the stuff after the decimal point. Uh, and thus, we'll get 91. If I recalculate it, I'll get 64. I recalculate 78, and I'm just, I could get 100, 37. I could just keep on doing this, and I'm going to get, uh, in a uniform distribution, numbers between uh, zero, a bit between uh, 1 and 100. So this is the first component. Before we talk about getting unique numbers here, uh, we at least know how we could get uh, we, could, we could get random numbers within a specific range. And if we wanted to get numbers between 1 and 30, instead of multiplying by 100, we multiply by 30. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to proceed when we uh, start this next part.